Hey, trucked up guys and gals. What's one of the biggest complaints we hear about EV trucks? Towing, right? Sure, most truck owners never actually tow anything, but we're all aware of the complaints that EV trucks suck at it anyway. To try and solve this, the focus is on battery density, aerodynamics, and efficiency, which uh, last time I checked are all pretty darn good things to look at. Let me illustrate the last century worth of truck design from all of the major truck manufacturers, including the newest. Oh, sh no, sorry. That's the billionaire dictated polygon CGI rendered door wedge. Scrap that. It's this one. But nobody's ever really cared because for decades, truck ads have been like, Our trucks are tough, mean, manly, and big. And will run over anything and crush everything with power, torque, towing and hauling, and blowing out flames, burning villages, and eating incoming howitzer sharks for breakfast. Okay, I, I forgot to take my meds again. Then EV trucks came on the scene and asked a new question, one that never seemed to have crossed the minds of ice truck R&D folk. Hey Bob, what do you think about uh, if we uh, made them, uh, I don't know, aerodynamic and efficient? Are you taking your meds? And lo and behold, it made EV trucks somewhat viable in the process. Huh, go figure. But at towing, ho, 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 no, not a freaking chance. And yet, here's the thing, the solution will have less to do with the actual truck and more to do with what it's pulling. Truck, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boring, imminent, geek moment. Geek moment. Although EV trucks are far more efficient with the use of their energy stored than fossil fuels, and often designed to be way more frugal in every aspect of their function over internal combustion engine trucks, there's no denying that one kilogram of gasoline produces an equivalent of 12,000 200 watt hours of energy. The best cutting edge battery density reached to date, and this is in the lab by the way, has attained only 700 watt hours per kilogram. So even when all the factors are included and we give an overly optimistic and generous assumption of let's say four times, four, four, eight, that's eight, four times overall better use of energy than a tried and true gas or diesel burning brick on wheels, ice trucks still reign supreme because they can carry so much more packed energy in that gasoline compared to even the largest battery packs out there. In the end, a gas truck can simply outrange an EV truck when towing between fueling stops, plain and simple. So screw the truck. <laughs> Yeah, ah, oh. oh, no, that's really not right. Let's examine fifth wheel travel trailers, toy haulers, and flatbeds for a moment, shall we? They're even bigger bricks than the trucks, or in the case of a flatbed, whatever is loaded onto it. Why would you use that? Those don't even exist. All being dragged through a wall of fuel guzzling wind resistance like a high speed bungalow. I, I, you know, my video editor is just, that's, I do that. Oh, yeah, well. But that's where innovation might finally bridge the biggest range gap of them all. What if your fifth wheel travel trailer, your toy hauler, or your flatbed drove itself, or at the least, assisted? Better yet, what if it made replacement fuel while on the road? Crazy? Well, some of this tech is already on the market and more is on the way. Let's look at fifth wheel travel trailers first, and we'll start with the Lightship L1. Sounds like one of the sacrificial exploding ships from the Battlestar Galactica. But this futuristic human pea pod has attained the goal of creating a camping trailer that is not only a brilliant engineering masterpiece by lowering its drag substantially when it's in transit, but achieving near zero range loss for the EV truck towing it. Holy crap, you say? Well, besides that expression being rather worrisome in how it came to be, you're freaking right. This thing is three times more aerodynamic than a standard travel trailer in road mode, showcasing its sleek and streamlined form with a driving height of only six foot nine inches to keep crosswinds at bay. It's not like driving down the road with an open sail. The batteries 
are all packaged in the chassis for super low center of gravity, basically gluing this thing to the road, creating the most stable towing experience possible. That onboard powertrain gives you 300 miles of self-powered range, matching most of the EV trucks out there. Once at your destination, L1 quickly converts to camp mode, providing amazing living space and modern conveniences all without burning a drop of fuel, even though it does look like you're living in a suppository for a sperm whale. But it's worth it. Say goodbye to noisy generators and smelly gas. The surface area of the roof is substantial and provides a huge solar array, which means a full seven days of off-grid living with full power. This thing can be boosted by another 50% by adding the optional solar awnings. What's even crazier is that you can use the L1 to charge your EV while you're at the campsite, further extending your remote capabilities. Between trips, when you got this thing parked at home, don't put it in storage. This has the added bonus in that you can plug it into your house as a massive power producing energy storing home backup system generator or a mother-in-law suite, because really, I mean, who wants her in the house, right? Now, although Lightship is taking pre-orders, who knows how long it will take to get this thing into consumers' driveways. But they're not alone. The writing is on the wall, and competition is already heating up. Enter the Pebble Flow. Not only does this platform share many of the qualities we see in the L1, Pebble plans to begin deliveries of their first production units before the end of this year. When at home, use it as an additional cottage space, home office, or again as a power outage backup system. And when off grid, tap into an ample 45 kilowatt hour battery pack, an optional magic pack that provides its own drivetrain, remote control maneuvering, and parking. You can remotely park the darn thing. With the optional magic hitch, the Pebble Flow senses self positions and safely attaches itself to your EV truck hitch. That's getting pretty wonky. But this pastry shaped life pod gets even cooler. With its dual motor active propulsion assistance system or APAS, there we go again. Is that app? Ass. Where was I? Oh yeah, it completely offsets the range loss one would previously experience when towing with an EV truck. Again, it comes with a massive solar array and the ability to remain off-grid for a week on its own power. It's Instacamp feature, what's that, ick? It's gonna be ick? Hey, you go camping, I'll press the ick button has one thinking about end times robot overlords, since it does everything for you once you've arrived at your campsite. With the press of a single button, the Pebble Flow engages its auto level stabilizers, its stairs, its awnings, thermostat, and then the lights, just everything automatically just bing. But I don't wanna go camping, Dave. Now these things, of course, aren't cheap. Get ready to dole out well north of $100,000 for these babies. But their traditional counterparts aren't much cheaper anyway. Go price out a fifth wheel, you know. It probably explains why I'm contemplating living in my truck. Even the old guard, the grandpappies of RVing, <laughs> like Airstream, are getting in on the action. Although just a concept, according to their promo pitch, the E-Stream has garnered so much attention, I imagine the bosses upstairs have a good hunch about what trajectory this thing is following. All the bells and whistles we see on the Lightship L1 and the Pebble Flow are also part of the E-Stream. What's with these names? I mean, it's, you put them all together and it just sounds like some kind of B-porn. I mean, you gotta be pretty low to go to B-porn. But what about trailers used to haul, you know, non-recreational work trailers. Well, we're already seeing the leap being made by the trucking industry as every company is looking for ways to cut costs, make more money, meet more stringent emission requirements, all while trying to avoid having to replace their entire truck fleet, which is insanely expensive. The tech that we are seeing come to market offers a bridge, or in some cases, an outright fix for these companies. The first is startup Revoy, which has made the Revoy EV, say that three times drunk, which is basically a small trailer loaded with lithium ion batteries that attaches to a diesel semi truck to effectively turn it into a hybrid and assist in pulling the semi's trailer. When done, it can be swapped out or returned at a logistics stop or depot, and thus the company doesn't even have to buy the darn thing, but simply pays for its use. 
the numbers are staggering in what this saves in fuel. According to Charged Fleet and Infrastructure News, the Revoy EV's battery provides enough extra power to increase a rig's fuel efficiency from 6 to 8 miles per gallon of diesel to 20 to 35 miles per gallon, cutting emissions by 70 to 80% and potentially saving a shipper as much as $25,000 in fuel costs per truck per year. That's a big deal. What's more important is how close this kind of tech is to making the jump to standard trailers and flatbeds. Range Energy has already done the deed with commercial semi-trailers. Again, according to the same source above, Range Energy is developing a trailer that's equipped with a battery pack a motor, and intelligent features to maximize its efficiency. The trailer can be paired with a legacy diesel burning rig or an EV rig like the Freightliner E-Cascadia, Volvo VNR, or Tesla Semi. But the biggest news is from three trailer manufacturers that I contacted who all indicated they are already working on adapting this very technology for their flatbed customers. They're not willing to disclose their products that are in the making currently. However, one such manufacturer, Thor Industries, is actively pursuing many electric assisted trailer concepts, including the Airstream's eStream I mentioned above, of which it is the parent company. This tech is on the cusp of taking off everywhere, even locally here in Canada, one province over from where I live at the University of Calgary Engineering Design Fair in 2022. They featured a flatbed that successfully demonstrated the effectiveness of an electric drive assist feature. This only indicates to me that such projects and concepts are widely being pursued everywhere and we are on the cusp of significant design disclosures in the very near term. Even better, New robust solar design using highly durable panels means that the very flat bed surface could technically be maximized when the payload is offloaded, allowing it to recharge the batteries while the equipment works and the trailer sits idle, further improving its range. This is what gets me tingly, man. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> Engineering problems are nothing of the sort. They're simply challenges waiting for innovative solutions and they're coming. Or in some cases, they're already here for the advancement of the EV truck. I assure you that I am on the case and will keep you updated on the latest developments and products that you might be able to get your hands on in the near future. Please help me do so by supporting this channel on my shoestring budget by clicking the donate membership or the Patreon coffee and flat tire fund. Because <laughs> Yes, flat tires. Yeah, this I have flat tires. Or by clicking the like, subscribe, and bell notification icon to stay in the know and help out this channel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.